The West Point honor concept is pretty simple. It states, a cadet will not lie, cheat, or steal, or tolerate those who do. On Monday, West Point officials announced that they were dealing with a cheating scandal. 73 cadets are accused of cheating on a calculus final that was administered at the end of second semester last year. 59 of those cadets have admitted to participating in the scandal. Four of those quit and another eight believe they're not guilty and are gonna have their cases adjudicated in a hearing at West Point. So Tim Bakken, who's a 20 year law prof, has called this a national security issue. And he said the existence of a cheating scandal at West Point is indicative of a culture that needs correcting. He broke those accused into two basic camps. Those who've owned up to their misconduct and those who seemed inclined and may be inclined in the future to taking shortcuts. So there is some subtlety in this notion of shortcuts that you actually learn while you're at a service academy. So I think back to my time at the Naval Academy. Summer of 1978, I showed up after having been born and raised by a Marine Corps aviator, not an academy grad, but a lot of those who worked for my dad when he was CEO of a squadron did go to the academy and their stories were cool enough that I applied. I didn't get in out of high school because my SATs were too low, but I did get in a prep school program that wound up sending me to Texas, the Marine Military Academy, where I went for a year, got my SATs up, wound up getting accepted, appointed, and showed up summer of 78. So plebe summer was challenging, but not that hard. Physically, I was okay with being yelled at and harassed. No big deal. But during plebe summer, you sit down with academic advisors, and they start to talk about the forthcoming academic year. And they ask you, what major did you want to pick? And so at a glance, I was like, I like to design things and I'm a big fan of sailboats. So I think I want to be a naval architect. And the lady I was talking to actually laughed. And she looked at what I'd validated course-wise and I'd only validated two semesters of French. She explained how hard naval architecture was that every year, a hundred people in a class choose naval architecture and only 10 graduate. So the rest either switch majors or wind up getting thrown out. So I'm like, mm, okay, I don't want to get thrown out right from the get-go. So what do you recommend? She said, well, I think because you've validated only French and not calculus or chemistry or physics, maybe you should be what we call a bull major. And that's history, English, or poli sci. I'm thinking, oh, I like current events and politics. I'll choose poli sci. So I wound up being a poli sci major. However, the thing about majoring in anything at the Naval Academy, and this is because of the technical elements of being in the modern Navy, particularly nuclear power and the influence of Hyman Rickover, regardless of your major, you wind up taking these really hard, what they call core courses, three semesters of calculus, differential equations, thermodynamics, statics, weapons, electrical engineering. So I don't care what your major is, you're gonna have some focus on these core courses and they're hard. And so what the academy also teaches you is time management. So by design, you have more on your plate than you can do fully. So you learn time management, triage. And part of this is the formal process and part of it is the informal culture. So early on, upper class would teach us about the gouge. The gouge is a slang term for really good intel, the skinny. And they would have these things called gouge files 
for the core courses. And they would hand those down. And in the gouge file would be perhaps all the exams that had been administered when they took these core courses, like let's say calculus. And some profs had a history of being lazy and giving the same exams over and over. And so as part of your study materials, maybe you'd review the exam that was administered last year. So, okay. I managed to get through with a 2.7 GPA. And the thing about the West Point cheating scandal that resonated with me is the way they discovered that they cheated is they all answered one question wrong the same way. And I was thinking back to a time when I was accused of an honor offense at the Naval Academy. So it was my sophomore year, second semester, I was taking a course called Differential Equations. And you know it's going to be interesting when you walk into the first day of class and your prof is the same guy who wrote the book. And that was true in my case. So my roommate, who was a football player, and I had the same prof. We weren't in the same class, but we had the same prof for Diffie Qs. So during the course of the semester, there was this one computer lab assignment. And this is the day, be, days be, way before laptops and, and Microsoft and Apple. There was a building that had computer terminals, and we would use this language called BASIC. And the really advanced people would use this language called FORTRAN. So one of the assignments was write a basic program that can solve this differential equation, right? So I, I sucked at writing computer programs. Again, I'm a poli-sci major. So I went to my other roommate, not the guy that had the same prof I did, but a third roommate who was good at computers and said, hey, here's the problem. What do you, what do you recommend I do here? And he's like, well, I would maybe do this step. So I wrote a program that did that and went over to the computer building and typed in this basic program and it started shooting out this answer and it had this loop. I was like, okay, whatever, close enough. I, I'm done. I'm running out of time. So I submitted that. We all get our papers back, our tests back, our lab assignments back except me. And I looked to the professor. I'm like, what's up? Because I want to talk to you after class. So go to him after class. And he says, I want to know who cheated you or your roommate, my football player roommate. I'm like, what are you talking about? He goes, you had the same wrong answer, exactly the same. I'm like, I don't know what to tell you, prof. I didn't cheat. I wrote this thing. Now, I will say, I went to my roommate to go, what would you recommend here? And he gave me advice on the steps, but I didn't cheat. And I'm wondering if maybe our other roommate didn't go to my roommate, the same guy who's near us, and get the same advice. So talk to him. So he did that. And he accepted, ultimately, that is the answer. No malice, no not really cheating. So he dropped the accusation of an honor offense. So, whew, right? When somebody says honor offense, it scares the hell out of you. So there's this thing about figuring out how to do time management that can get you into trouble. And you have to know how to navigate that. Nobody has enough time to fully study three hours for every hour of class. You just don't. So along the way, you could get caught up in something like what these plebe cadets, now sophomores, are caught up in. So I can relate. There's this thing called you rate what you get away with. You learn that as a plebe. Now, it doesn't mean cheat your ass off. It just means figure out the subtleties of 
this thing called time management. So during my last tour in active duty, I taught at the Naval Academy. And I taught this ethics course. And one of the case studies that we taught was the electrical engineering cheating scandal of the early 90s at the Naval Academy. And so as we're talking about this thing, I would admit to my students that at some level, I felt a little bit like a hypocrite because part of what was baked into this case study was midshipmen just getting good gouge and a lazy prof. So there's a difference in my mind to those who cook up the cheating scandal, like the guys in Animal House, you remember the movie Animal House, that find, you know, D-Day and Bluto are digging through the trash bin and they find a mimeograph and everybody knows they're cheating. Now, if you get into an exam and you realize, I've seen these questions before, then maybe you might raise your hand and go, oh, Prof, I, I've seen this exam. Or would you just go, man, I had really good gouge. And it sucks that the prof is lazy, and so I'm going to just press on. This is what I'm talking about in terms of the subtleties of honor. right? So we'd have this conversation. The other thing that existed, and this didn't exist when I was a mid, and, and now it does exist, and this is what you're seeing, the 59 mids, or the 59 cadets are being allowed to, to go through, is this thing called honor remediation, which is a program where you aren't thrown out, but you have to atone for your sins by sitting down with an officer and talking about this thing about morality, ethics, cheating, right and wrong. And so, as related by West Point officials, the 59 that are going to be in honor remediation will be doing so for the balance of their time as cadets. So, Lieutenant Colonel Chris Ofart, who is a West Point spokesman, said the following, the honor process is working as expected, and there have been no exceptions to policy for any of these cases. Cadets are being held accountable, are accountable for breaking the code. I think that's true, right? So at the same time, while we Naval Academy grads like to point fingers at West Point, news broke this morning in the local Annapolis paper that the Naval Academy is now potentially dealing with a cheating scandal. And this is what it, quote, due to potential inconsistencies noted in the administration of the in-person proctored computer-based final exam for physics, all midshipmen who were enrolled in this course during the fall semester have received a marking of incomplete. The Naval Academy is working to resolve the uncertainties surrounding the final examination as quickly as possible. So more to follow on that. But regardless, what I'm saying to those who are concerned about the future of the modern military and what's going on at our service academies is calm down. I agree with the West Point spokesman, Colonel Ofark. The process is working. Our future is in good hands. The defense of the nation is not at risk. All right. Thank you for subscribing. Thanks for liking and sharing. Your support is very appreciated, and I look forward to talking to you again soon.